Hello and welcome to Another Look. I'm Cynthia Barnes. You're about to meet an amazing man, Lieutenant Colonel Clarence Jameson. He's living history. He's a Tuskegee Airman and a member of the 99th Pursuit Squadron, the first African-American fighter pilots with the U.S. Army Air Corps. Jameson is from the Cleveland area, and he has a remarkable story that's chronicled in a book, Memories of Tuskegee. Here is a man who went away, fought overseas for his country, only to come back here to the United States, come back home, and have to deal with the racism and prejudice. In 1941, activists and black leaders appealed to the courts to end Jim Crow segregation and allow young black men the opportunity to become pilots. The War Department formed the 99th Pursuit Squadron to be trained at the Army Airfield in Tuskegee, Alabama, near the site of Booker T. Washington's famous Tuskegee Institute. The school had already established a civil aviation branch and it was quickly converted for military use. The plan was met with scorn from many white military and political leaders who thought the experiment would merely prove the inadequacy of blacks to become flyers. Such ridiculous theories were soon put to rest by confident cadets who came from all over America to join the program. Here now, with me is Lieutenant Colonel Clarence Jameson. I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. And you look great. You're 94 years young. You look great. Thank you um, for just um, allowing another look to come into your home and talk with you. I know that we've talked with you before uh, several years back and uh, you always are very welcoming uh, to us. You spent, um, you grew up in, um, you were born rather in Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, and you came to Cleveland when you were five years old, right? Yes. My, my mother and father came to Cleveland with my two older brothers and left behind me and my little sister, my baby sister, Ray, with our grandmother. And after my father and mother were settled in Cleveland, they sent for us and, and my little baby sister, Ray, baby Ray, and I came to Cleveland and rejoined our parents. So your, your baby sister is how many years younger than you? Two years younger than me, and she's living in uh, Georgia with her granddaughter at the military base. She's 91. Well, you, you have great genes, I can tell you that. Like I said, you look wonderful. So you, you came to Cleveland. You've been here since you were five years old. Um, where did you go to school? I, I, went, I did all of my schooling. In Cleveland, I went to elementary school and then I finished uh, from Bolton Elementary School. I went to Old Central High. I spent the seventh grade through the twelfth, six years at Old Central High, and then from Central Central High, I went to live with my uncle in Chicago. College there, right? Yeah. I went to attend the University of Chicago and that was my really first introduction to flying right. and at the University of Chicago that's when I was found out about the uh, civilian pilot training course CPT and uh, it was offered to all the students and the fellow who ran the flying school he was under contract with the University of Chicago to pro provide flight training for any of the students who wanted to apply for it and really that truly helped me because he was a a test pilot for Bell Aircraft a graduate of MIT he was a true engineer, but he was a, a heck of a pilot, and he was from deep south Alabama, and, and I remember him just saying, well, when we showed up at the, at the uh, flying class, the CPT class, he said, well, he, the way he put it, he probably said something like, I never, I never, uh, 
tell me he's close as far as how to fly before, but... Uh, he was a white gentleman, and he, the instructor, he didn't know, he said he had never taught African Americans. Right. Well, of course, he said, he said colored, because back in that day, that's the right. terminology. Uh, Negroes, colored, right. I, I'm not sure what he said. We weren't even using Afro-Americans then. The time, right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I uh, completed the primary course and received my uh, uh, pilot's license, civilian pilot's license while I was still in college. And I had two years. I was in my third year then, and I heard about the formation of the uh, 99th Pursuit Squadron. And of course the draft board was always breathing down your neck. If you weren't in school, I was going to end up in the Army drafted. And I said, and I heard about the formation of this Experimental 99, 99, <coughs> 99th Pursuit Squadron. And uh, I told my buddy Sherman, that sounds pretty good. As if you're accepted and you finish, uh, at that time, I think you should get, uh, you graduate as a second lieutenant, you join the Army as an Army Air Corps cadet. So you go and, in with, more, yeah. with better credentials. And if you finish, you be, you graduate, you become an officer. And I said that sounds much better than being a second lieutenant in the Army Air Force. You, your your story is so <laughs> your story is so interesting. So we want the viewers to stay right there. We want to hear more of your remarkable story on another look when we come back. <laughs>